your learning characteristics ecologists use to describe populations. For example, now you know the concept of population density, the concept of uh, population boundaries, and also how populations can take up the area where they live, sometimes living in clumps, sometimes evenly distributed, or sometimes following a random pattern of distribution. Now we're going to fo uh, focus our attention on the concept of demography and life tables. Demography is going to be a study that will allow an ecologist to understand better the age distribution of a population. Let me explain to you better what I mean. An age distribution is going to tell you how many members of a population are in the pre-reproductive uh, ages, for example, those that are juveniles or newborn, uh, also what number of members in a population are going to be in the reproductive uh, years and which ones are going to be nearing the end of their life expectancy. What we want to focus on here is going to be death rates and birth rates because often how many organisms are born on a given year and how many die will allow an ecologist to determine if a population will be increasing in numbers over time or if it's going to stabilize or if the population may be going down. Let's take a look at this uh, simplified way of looking at the demography of a population. And so here we are looking at a table that is showing you a study and the numbers for this study of gray squirrels. This is a classic study done here in the United States by a team of biologists. And so let's spend some time understanding the qualities that are described on this table. The table itself is going to be known as a, a cohort life table. All these numbers here are describing what happens to a cohort. And a cohort is going to be all of the individuals born in the same year within a population. Since we're looking at gray squirrels, we can say, looking at this table that on a given year, when this study was conducted, there was a total of 530 newborn gray squirrels. And what we do with this table is we want to follow how many of these squirrels live from one year to the next, to the next, to the next, for the entire life expectancy of these animals, which happens to be five years. There are no gray squirrels that live to six years of age because their DNA, the genetics doesn't allow it. And so on the year of this study, when we began looking at this cohort, there was a total of 530. By year one, only 159 has survived. Then there were 80, next 48, 21, and then five. What we can describe using these numbers is qualities such as the survival probability from birth to a specific age. We can also take a look at the age-specific mortality. And we can also take a look at the age-specific mortality rate. Let's take a look at what happens on this table. So year one, I'm sorry, well, the, the year these animals were born, uh, that's year zero. There was a um, survival probability of one, meaning that all of these 530 individuals were alive to begin with. We didn't add this table. Those that didn't uh, born uh, were not born alive or died you know, before the study began. Uh, but what we can see is that if we go from year zero, which was when the squirrels were born, to year one, only about 30% of those individuals made it. This 159 happens to be 30% of 530. And if you were to ask me, okay, what is the probability that a squirrel is going to make it to from birth to year three, and that is going to be only 0.9%. That's what this uh, column on the table is telling you, the probability from birth to a specific age that a squirrel will be alive. And if we look over here, the percentage of uh, squirrels that made it to year five, which is the longest, the oldest they can be, is going to be only 1%, only five out of 530. Let's to take a look for a moment at the age-specific mortality. These numbers are really straightforward, and basically they are telling you for these squirrels that were born on a given year, 
371 died within that year, meaning they never turned one year of age. If you look at year one, year one we began with only 159 of these squirrels, and what we're saying is that 79 out of these 159 will die during this year of their lives. And if you want to go to year five, for example, this is a sobering reality. Uh, there were five, only five squirrels surviving out of the cohort of 530, and all of these five are expected to die uh, at this fifth year of their uh, age, of their lives. And uh, we also have a way of expressing those numbers in terms of uh, mortality rates. So if we look at these uh, 530 squirrels that we began our study with, the total of the cohort, we're saying that there's going to be a 70% mortality rate for this age, year zero. Now, if you look at these 159 and 79 of those died, that corresponds to 50%. 50% of these squirrels will be dead within this first year of their life. Now, if you look at, uh, say, for example, H4, H4 begins with 21 of the squirrels, and 16 of those will die. Well, that's exactly 75% out of the 21 squirrels that will be dead before they turn five years, uh, age five. And so that's what this table will allow an ecologist to do. Remember, we call it a cohort life table because we're following uh, a number of individuals born in the same year and how many of those are alive throughout the rest of their life expectancy. With this type of information, specifically with the age-specific mortality and also with the uh, age-specific mortality rate, ecologists can build what we call a survivorship curve. And on this survivorship curve, done for the same types of animals for the gray squirrels and the cohort we saw on the previous table, we can see that the survivorship curve, when the data are converted to a uh, national log scale, there's going to be almost like a diagonal line. And what this is telling you is that the survivorship for these animals is going to be uh, pretty much described by a constant rate of death. If we look back at the table, we can see that if you look at uh, squirrels of age one, 50% die. At age two, 40% die. At age three, 55% die. And so that means that there's going to be a pretty much constant rate of mortality or survival, depending on how you want to look at this, for these kinds of animals. And what ecologists will want to do eventually is see what happens with the different kinds of populations of organisms that are found in one place. Here, I'm going to use this graph to illustrate to you three different possibilities that can happen. Let's begin with the type one survivorship curve. This is going to be typical of organisms like humans and maybe animals like elephants that have a long life expectancy and there's going to be a great deal of uh, parental care provided for the young. If uh, you happen to know about elephants, you will know that uh, the elephants, be, they stay with their mothers up until the age of 13, 14, even 16 sometimes, depending on her and her guidance in order to survive with humans the same type of dynamic, the protection and the care parents provide to the young results in a very low mortality rate. And that's what we see here, the percentage of maximum lifespan and the number of survivors. And so most infants are going to live through all of their infancy and all the way even to the uh, middle ages for humans uh, in, in most societies. And mortality doesn't become a significant factor until much later in life. That is when the number of survivors for a cohort will be going down in a rapid fashion. And that's because the older we get, there is a greater risk for uh, developing diseases of a uh, genetic nature like cancer. There's also a greater probability that something has happened in our lives, an accident, or something that has impaired our quality of life in our uh, older years. And so that's why mortality increases later in life. But if you look at early in life, mortality rates are going to be really low, meaning that most members of a population will still be alive. 
Now, if you look at this type three survivorship curve in contrast, we will see that most members of some populations die very early on. And this happens with many species that reproduce in large numbers and have a short life expectancy. Think, for example, about populations of mosquitoes. Think, for example, about this organism shown in this picture, which is going to be a mussel. And the same can be said about many things that live in the ocean, uh, including jellyfish, including all different kinds of mollusks, arthropods like shrimp. Most of them are going to die really early on. Here, there's no parental care for these individuals to remain in a community, meaning the species not to go away. It's a numbers game. And so the greater the numbers, the greater the birth rate that they have is going to ensure that at least a few of these individuals will survive throughout most of the lifespan. So you can see here that very early on in life, the majority of members born on a certain year for a population are going to be dead. And then we have the case of the squirrels. Uh, not only gray squirrels, but these little animals you'll see here, which is a ground squirrel. They're going to have this type of a steady survivorship or death rates. And uh, this also happens uh, in birds, for many bird species. So I'm talking about songbirds, sparrows, uh, finches. I'm thinking about uh, vireos and many other beautiful birds. They have this type of a steady decline throughout most of their uh, lifespan. And uh, so remember, that with these animals, actually, the constant mortality rates is going to be mostly subject to events like uh, random events, like a predator came and uh, found one of the uh, two-year-olds. A predator can just as easily capture a three-year-old or a four-year-old squirrel. So the chances of dying are not related to age, but mostly related to the place where these animals live. Whereas for the type 3 survivorship curve, uh, due to the nature, there's no parental care, and these animals are usually collected in large numbers by other types of predators in the environment, um, yes, their numbers will decline really early on in life. And uh, that's what I wanted to share with you with regards to demographics and um, life tables and the survivorship curves that can be made from those uh, types of data on a survivorship um, or life table.